Hello and welcome to the FMCC webinar, Evolution of FM in India, presented by Atanu Guha. Next slide, please. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I do want to let everyone know that you have been muted for audio quality. If you do have any questions during this webinar, please feel free and type them into the question box, and we'll go over them uh, during the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be on the FMCC website. Next slide, please. And this is the vision statement and mission statement for the FMCC. Next slide. The FMCC provides many services to the FM community, such as Ask the Expert, Find a Consultant, Locate a Speaker, and Online Educational Resources. You may find more information at their website, fmcc.ifma.org. Next slide, please. As always, we'd like to thank the sponsors of the FMCC. Next slide. And I want to welcome everyone and wish everyone a happy World FM Day that we're actually making World FM Week. This is the kickoff. So I want to thank you for joining us. Next slide. We do have upwards of 38, 39 presentations over the next four days um, covering global issues. We have presenters from all over the world, in case in point today with Atu. And so we're thrilled to have um, that global perspective to truly make this World FM Day. Next slide, please. And this is just a shot of some of the presenters that will be coming up over the next few days. Next slide. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to Atanu. He's going to tell a little bit about himself. Thank you so much. Um, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you uh, in the various parts of the world. Uh, my name is Atanu Guha. Uh, at present, I'm employed with CBRE as the Region Account and Alliance Director for the Deutsche Bank account uh, for the APAC region handling uh, 15 odd countries. Uh, I started my career as a military pilot um, with Indian Armed Forces um, and thereafter moved into the world of facility management and aerospace management. I um, have worked uh, extensively across the globe uh, in the US, uh, Southeast Asia, Canada and parts of Europe. I have managed a couple of large successful uh, global outsourcing and transition activities both from the client side and from the service provider side. Uh, I have been holding uh, this role for the past two years and more. I am also extremely passionate about partnering and solving social and environment challenges. I do have uh, a diploma in environment law and I do look after various environment related issues uh, with WWF in India as well as elsewhere. I'm also visiting faculty for WWF for some of the environmental courses and I do take classes in marine pollution control. Um, I am a part of IFMA for uh, many years and it's been a wonderful journey so far. Um, I, would, I would be covering the evolution of FM in India and uh, to, uh, to, to begin on that what I would like to say at the very outset is that India is on track to becoming one of the economic powerhouse with uh, strengthening GDP, better business environment and an investor friendly policies by the current government. Uh, so uh, the platform is well set for any industry uh, to develop, grow into a more robust structure in India at this juncture. And I think for the world of FM, this could possibly not be a better opportunity and, and an op uh, and, and a occasion to rejoice and grow it in, in strength. And that's where IFMA, I think, would play a major role in this emerging uh, economic uh, development for India. Uh, however, uh, FM in India is still at a very, very nascent stage. While the other developed countries and nations have moved well into a well-structured, developed FM discipline or an FM industry, uh, typically in India, uh, the FM world is still known more in, as an administration or administrator. And, and that's been a nomenclature which has been used for many years. And uh, primarily, you would have 
the facility managers primarily uh, from uh, retired uh, officers from the armed forces or you would have typical engineers they would form the bulk of the FM community in India uh, that's a legacy which is slowly changing and transforming and the process is on however uh, as I said uh, still FM in India is still to make inroads uh, as, as far as the other developed countries are concerned. Uh, while as we say the nomenclatures etc but primarily the various aspects on the gamut of facility management in India has been growing steadily over the years and is set to witness a huge and significant business upscale in the next few years primarily because of uh, the huge amount of construction which is happening. Uh, in India. However, uh, the FM industry is still very, very fragmented. Uh, there are many unorganized players uh, within, within the framework of facility management. Uh, still works on very large, uh, low, uh, low cost and low margins. So what is required is some kind of business consolidation. Um, and a lot of companies are going that path through various kinds of uh, acquisition and mergers, making the industry stronger, making their discipline stronger, more visible and more viable. But if you still look at the large and complex geographical structure in India, uh, the facility management industry is primarily uh, centered around the five major uh, metros in India. So it's Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Kolkata. The tier 2 and the tier 3 cities, uh, the penetration while it's there but definitely not at the same extent of the large five metros and the demand for such services are still uh, concentrated on, on the uh, development spaces which is happening on, on, the, uh, on the urban landscape around these five or six uh, large metros. However, uh, with the new government and a push for further developing uh, or making inroads in the Tier 2, Tier 3 cities, this is a great opportunity for the FM industry to spread their wings and get into a more uh, significant space in the other smaller cities in India and uh, you know, spread uh, the length and breadth of the country. If I go to, uh, sorry, I have not been uh, uh, citing the slides, uh, though it's more, um, I thought it's more with the go of the flow, but we are on slide 15 right now. Uh, what I'll give you as a sneak preview on the FM industry scenario like in India, uh, as I said earlier, this at the current uh, juncture, India is going through a very strong and sustained growth and, and uh, because of the huge infusion of the construction industry, especially in the uh, real estate sector, it's, it's a boom right now. And you have many of these international property management consultants or companies who are here and many residential commercial complexes which are being built around, as I said, not only concentrated in the metros, but slowly spreading its wing in the Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities as well. Uh, However, it is also fueled by a lot of other manufacturing hubs which are slowly coming in. Lots of business are being outsourced, manufacturing business are being outsourced in India from Europe, from US and the other developing countries and that's also fueling that boom. Uh, going to slide 16, uh, uh, while this has led to a significant large demand for professional facility management services, housekeeping, security, cleaning and every aspect of FM and that's primarily because uh, the awareness which is increasing and the constructions of the malls and the retail stores has further fueled the demand uh, by the uh, FM industry. Uh, so this boom is not withstanding only uh, to the real estate sector but the various other aspects of the industry which are coming in are slowly requiring trained manpower. So the old legacy of anybody can come in with a little bit of administrative knowledge and do FM is slowly dying down and people realize the potential of trained skilled manpower like an FM uh, uh, prof uh, professional. Uh, going to slide 17, uh, I'd like to talk about the current market status. It's, if you look at the 60, 
uh, if you look at the market, 60% uh, of the overall market is still catered for soft services and 40% for hard services. Uh, so the large uh, complexities uh, around this market, especially in the soft services, is, is in respect to catering, in, uh, in, in the food courts, uh, the cleaning, the reception, housekeeping, etc. And uh, the other aspects of this uh, industry, especially the cleaning and the housekeeping, which contributes a large part to this market, is still comprised of a lot of unorganized sector, the small players who are still vying for space. So while large global uh, IPCs, uh, companies like CBRE and JLL and Colliers and ISS are there, but the reliance on trained manpower for this segment is still on the rise and there is not enough despite the factor that it's a large com country, large population. But looking at the strain manpower, not only for cleaning and housekeeping, for security, for engineering services, etc., there's a huge demand. And that's, that's one area where uh, uh, IFMA or the FM industry can really come in and make a significant uh, difference in, in getting or training or uh, making ready the FM personnel for various segmented uh, parts of the FM uh, discipline. If you go to slide 18, uh, the commercial sector also witnessed the highest percentage share of overall FM services. Gradually, the Indian commercial sector is maturing and providing a huge potential among other sectors. So today you have a cluster of foreign banks, uh, city banks, Barclays, Amex, Standard Charter Bank, and all other MNCs. Now, everybody wants to see consistency and uniformity among the quality of services which are offered in their workspace, the facilities, etc. So the demand for professional services, for a proper, robust FM st structure is more than what it used to be in the previous years. Uh, so with all the advent of the global companies, be it banking, be it manufacturing, be it IT, the requirements and the demand is filling the requirement for full-time, highly professional, highly skilled FM personnel to come on board. Uh, slide 19, uh, the outsourced services coupled with the investment in real estate and the construction industries. The growth of this market has been primarily driven by the need of more professionals, as I said. Uh, however, what has happened is the current uh, economic situation which prevails across the globe today has little impact today on the uh, burgeoning economy in India because everything in terms of construction or real estate or outsourcing activities are on the rise in India. So while in other countries there could be some kind of a, a stagnation or kind of a slowdown but India, what we are witnessing uh, for the last couple of years uh, and what we foresee in the near foreseeable future, that this growth would grow unbated. So there would be demand for higher services, higher quality of services, more skilled manpower, and this FM industry is looking at the right opportunity to boom at this juncture. If I go to the next slide, which is slide 20, uh, we talk about India's growth, which is expected to be intact with the GDP growth at 7.5% or higher in the coming years, as I explained the current economic situation, which, which leaves a long-term implication in the growth opportunities, uh, not only for the FM industry as such, but for the other tertiary industries as well. So at this juncture, I think it's a very critical juncture for the FM industries uh, to, uh, to tie base with not only real estate, but every aspects of the industry to see where FM can play a significant role. Some of the untapped industries in today's market, what I see in India is the hospitality industry, hospitals, hotels, these are still managed in-house by uh, the, their own corporate houses. So hotels and hospitals in India. Uh, the medical tourism is on the rise in India. So many large scale uh, hospitals are coming up, uh, large global brands. So the medical tourism has been in rise for the last 10 years or so. 
and so we see a boom in the hotel industry as well so this is one sector which is still untapped in my view uh, because those are still managed in-house this is where the FM industry uh, in India can make a big dent in acquiring these significant industrial areas as well uh, if you go to slide 21 right now uh, where in the next few years the FM and the real estate uh, uh, real estate industries are likely to uh, experience significant demand for the facility management, integration, globalization, etc. So everybody uh, with higher level of awareness and when people are traveling, they all always would like to compare the quality of services they get in their office, uh, probably in US or in Singapore and Hong Kong, and they would like to compare that to India. And, and uh, in, in 2013, uh, Johnson Controls did uh, carry out uh, a kind of a survey which, which looked into various aspects to find out what comes out uh, from this survey into understanding uh, why industry leaders are you know, purchasing the outsourced FM Service India which is on the rise, what are the trends, what is happening. And to give you a better snapshot of that on slide 22. So according to the survey, around 90% of the responding organization present outsource FM and the real estate services and the demand are likely to grow. Now, this is primarily uh, happened because of uh, the large multinational and the global companies who are in India uh, are focusing on more of the core uh, competency or expertise. So if it's a bank or a telecom, uh, they would like to focus more on their uh, business, uh, uh, their core business. So for bank, it's banking. For telecom, it's telecom. The other parts of the workspace or the work environment, they would leave, like to leave it with a subject matter expert. So when they're looking for the SMEs, that's where the large outsourced FM companies come in. And that demand has been on a rise for quite many years is just getting better shape. So among all the service line, the greatest growth in outsourcing custom management is expected to occur in energy services, which is pegged around 50% with every company today is LEED certified, wants to go in for uh, better sustainability, lowering of carbon footprint, uh, reducing utility costs. So this is where this large um, FM companies with their outsourced structure brings in the best practices across the world uh, while uh, giving a global perspective on this industry uh, gets the best trained manpower training quality etc which 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 normally are rationalizing to reducing operating cost improves performance so you bring that global flair uh, to the table in india to the indian offices and that's why the outsourced requirement for the FM in India is on a major rise. If we go to slice 23, um, we talk about outsourcing of the facility management services, which primarily was initially initiated by the IT and the ITS companies, the, uh, the business processing and the knowledge processing outsourcing companies. This has later been followed uh, by almost all industries today, barring a few industries who still manage the core services themselves, but that that's a trend which is slowly changing and such companies, uh, uh, especially Indian companies, are becoming more open to the idea of outsourcing FM services in India. So what we've seen is a change of trend, not only in nomenclature, so from administrators or administration, you are now known as facility management, and from doing the core services yourself, the companies are today looking at large multinational companies outsourcing their uh, uh, facilities, the workspace, the strategy, the management to these companies to bring in subject matter experts, industry back practices, what's been happening globally, what can be uh, what can be used, what can be uh, what can be better utilized with the current resourcing in India, with the current structure, etc. So at this juncture, FM industry is going through a major change, a major metamorphosis in not only the way uh, the FM industry worked earlier in a very conventional manner, 
uh, to a today's more dynamic and more technologically evolved structure. If we go to slide 24, um, this is a snapshot of, uh, of uh, for example, due to the high entry barriers and as I said earlier, the very fragmented nature of the market and uh, to sustain competition, there is there is always a preference of local small companies who are very strong locally. So there would be a company who would be very strong in the West or there could be a larger small Indian company who would be very strong in the East, etc. So, and, and, and the important part is uh, uh, India with, with so many states, each state has a different regulation, statutory and regulatory requirement base. So it's very important for the outsourcing FM companies who are coming to India to understand the nuances, the complexities of such laws, the tax structure, which is again very complicated, very paper intensive, uh, not very much into an e-platform. So these are, uh, these are some of the issues which uh, the large companies in India initially try to grapple with. Uh, uh, the laws are different, so you need various licenses for various services, uh, particularly for transport, catering, separate licenses required where you have to change, amend some of the company bylaws. So those are some of the complexities, limiting factors, etc. In, in, in this space of FM industries. And it's very important that you continuously, uh, not only the companies, but but the FM managers as well to continually be up the curve, uh, get the right knowledge base, upscale their skill set, what's happening, technology, regulatory. For example, um, in the month of June, India is supposed to kickstart uh, the GST tax structure. It's a huge, huge, massive change uh, going to happen, which happened for so many years. So the first question is, are we ready for that? Uh, so. This is just an example. So the change is continuous and it's very important that companies and the FM managers stay up the curve uh, to be ready for these upcoming challenges. Uh, so on my last slide, which is uh, which I wanted to say that the present juncture the Indian facility market is in its nascent stage, growing very, very rapidly, uh, fueled primarily by the high pace of the uh, uh, construction sector. There's an increased awareness levels among different vertical markets. The market is expected to mature. And, uh, and this market maturity, understanding, accepting such services. While the trend is up, the trend is going up, but I would still say when I look at India and compare to other markets, India has a long way to go. But the, the, the good news is that uh, I think uh, the FM industry in India is in the right path today. I think uh, the approach is absolutely clear. Uh, the intention is clear. Uh, the industry knows where to go, how to go. Uh, many milestones have already been covered. Many milestones are yet to be covered. But if you look at the scope and the complexity of the country, you're still not there where you would want to be there. So in terms of opportunity, I think great opportunity for the FM industry, um, right time uh, to be, right place to be. And uh, with so much changes happening in terms of uh, taxation, in terms of better business policies, which is also seeing a lot of investments coming in India uh, in, the, in the near future and more are expected especially the manufacturing industry to grow. The, so in terms of every aspect of the FM industry, not only for the FM professionals, which should be made into a more viable professional uh, uh, career aspiration for people. So uh, it's also important uh, the tie-ups which the IFMA needs to do in educating the young uh, population which are still in their high school or colleges or universities to look at FM as one of the more interesting career opportunities they have to move away from the more conventional doctors, engineers, architects, uh, civil services, etc. So to making inroads into the educational institutions, getting in and catching them young uh, so this is something uh, which 
is also required for the day because uh, you cannot go unprepared in this industry it has to you have to attract the best of talent retain the best of talent and to do that you have to start at the very outset uh, from the time uh, uh, they're in school making an FM a brand name to be recognized with making a more awareness amongst people what FM is all about so uh, great opportunity but uh, again, a long way to go, but the future looks extremely bright and promising for the FM industry. So uh, that's the uh, uh, end of my presentation. Uh, I would welcome any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Yes, and if you do have any questions, please type them into the question box and we'll go over them during the... I'll give you just a moment. Attendee, do you want to go to the next slide? Sure. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions coming in at the moment. Okay, we'll go ahead and wrap this up then. I'll, next slide, please. Okay, the FMCC for what is World FM Day Celebration. We do have quite a few upcoming presentations. And here you can see the next three that are coming up. One out of the UAE. One's is general. Um, Graham is actually out of um, Australia and then Nigeria. Next slide, please. And I do want to remind everyone that the FMCC does have an app and it's available on both iPhone and Android platform. You can get that at Google Play and also iTunes. And so I encourage you to download that for updates and notifications. Next slide, please. And the F excuse me, the IFMA's FMCC STAG group is always looking for volunteers. So if you have an interesting webinar presentation, a white paper, podcast participant, or any sort of support, we would love to hear from you. And you can see Ricardo's um, contact information on this slide. Next slide, please. And the FMCC does like to make everyone aware of the other councils and communities that we have here and what a great resource they can serve for you. Next slide, please. And again, I'll, um, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And afternoon, I want to thank you for a very informative webinar on India. Thank you much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you so much, and have a great day, everybody.